I think I was 12, maybe 13. Someone left a tape in my parents' car that said Luna Sa'ana. I had no idea who it was and became obsessed with that record. But John was like a, a, a mystical star to me at that point. John started that group and they created a huge splash. And then shortly thereafter, John, you know, was part of the cool thing, Don Alani's group. It was like a super group. And then at first light with Michael Goldrick. This is the guy for me. Like, this is the best playing I've ever heard in my life. I went to Ireland for a year as a 13-year-old. The first thing we went to was Milton Malby for the Willie Clancy week, which is, it's like the Mardi Gras of Irish music. For that to be your first week in Ireland is, is insane. You know, these sessions are so packed. I go into the bar and it's just like jammed. I'm 13 years old, so I'm about as self-conscious as you can get. The mysterious, shrouded, like, character who I didn't know anything about is actually here. And I go up and I'm like standing behind him, I'm like waiting to like, somehow, I don't know what I'm gonna say. A friend of mine turned around to me and says, don't look now, John, but there's a, this young fella that hasn't taken his eyes off you for about half an hour. And uh, he's just staring at you. I go like, you know, are you John McSherry? And he goes like, yeah, I'm like, I'm, you're my favorite piper. From then on, we just developed this great friendship. He just gave so much of him, himself as a musician and as a person to me and, and also my folks. Tyler was entering the competitions when he was young. I was kind of tutoring him a wee bit, you know, just before the competitions, just giving him a few tips. Um, I think he lost that year <laughs> that I gave him the tips. <laughs> he's, he's really like got a really, really good soul. And, and now I look back on that and I can really appreciate that generosity. Myself and Tyler have been talking about doing an album for years. And uh, Tyler was in Ireland there a few months back. And this one just kind of came together. We only had two days, but we wrote nine tunes. And just on whistles, just in his living room. This is a great opportunity now to do it, you know? No time like the present. It was like bizarre to be in constant touch with John over Skype. It's amazing how we can do it while he's in the States and I'm in Ireland. Wait, you're in a different room right now, dude. I moved. I told you I was, I was moving rooms. Cool. It's a lot more comfortable. Is it? It's really, really comfortable. And there's more, there's more space, loads more space. When they move out, you said you were going to move your studio into that room. You're going to like have a dedicated into that room. room not, into that room next door then. Oh, my room. The very top one, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. You, you, to, yeah, your room. Yeah, yeah. my room. You never, yeah. you never asked me about that. You never asked me if that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ty, can I move my studio? <laughs> so what tune are you, you going to do Lunny first today? Yeah, I want to do that. So this one we have. So you want to go... Yeah. Okay. Give me a few takes to choose from, and we're, we're rocking and rolling, man. Good. Yeah, okay, so that'll take me um, five days, and I'll get <laughs> back to you then. You're such a perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> I said with Shimon, he's coming over today, and we're going to, like, launch, just, like, try to get the, like, the music stuff done, done. You know what I mean? Like, just yeah. so we can just launch in a recording. Good. And we go for that bridge and uh, funky... Funky Reel. Funky Reel Bridge and the Breton Bridge are the two like top priorities right now. You know? yeah. I like the Olam, man. Uh, yeah, are you digging it? I like it, man. It's cool. It's all by itself. Yeah, the Olam just says it all. I was like, well, I think the drummer should be Shimon because, I mean, Shimon and I have been playing, you know, almost as long as I've known John. Our communication is just like this. Like we just know the words, we know the vocabulary, we know what we both like. We can say the most abstract thing and just be like, do the head to the side kind of beat. You know what I mean? And Michael, Michael know what head to the side beat means, you know? <laughs> it's like, so that definitely makes it a lot faster. Me off, man. One, two, one, two, three, four. Elsie, Elsie. The 
this is my first time uh, in a project with John, and uh, it's just an honor to be involved. Yep. Yep. One more time. This new project with um, Tyler and the boys is really it's something fresh, I think, and uh, something to get your teeth into. We're having Joe Dart play bass, and that I'm really excited about. The music is so groove-oriented, and Joe is about as groovy as they make them. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, I'm honored to be on it, and I couldn't believe it when I first heard it. This is like a, a, a really cool canvas. For me, I'm coming in and I have like sick drums all done, you know, the guitar, and then I get to kind of like, you know, slip in there. It's like the right kind of aggressive. It's not like yeah, biting yeah, yeah. aggressive. Totally. It's like a badass motorcycle teddy bear. I was going to say, yeah, it's yeah. Like it's like a teddy very, bear riding a hawk. It's very manly. You know, coming from me, like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's no too hairy. Man. It's really hard to apply uh, any sort of label or, you know, a genre to this. It's like a groove record, you know, which is like my favorite. Like, Lunas is like the only real strong, like, bass presence in Irish music. You know, John is the one who has like much more of like a trad sure. following. I, I like the idea of his fans like hearing a bass player like Joe, who I don't think they would really encounter. Yeah, and it's cool to put those two together. This is the other, I, so I have a question about this part. I switched to natural toothpaste recently. Yeah. I was worried that it, I was gonna like lose my taste buds, you know? And I was just like, wow, you know what? If I didn't have my taste buds, like I'm not sure my life would really be worth living anymore. Yeah. You know, cause I just, you know, cause that's for me kind of what it's all about, you know, like, you know, I love music, but like food, <laughs> you know? Food. <laughs> like, I <fucking> love food. <laughs> Dude, what was that shit? That's like Play my that again? favorite. <laughs> That is so Jesse Murphy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like that's a fun part, man. We'll get kind of dub on that. You so know. dub, dude. I'm really proud of the way the album is is, is ended up. I think it's it's great the way myself and, and Tyler have merged our ideas have merged and the way Michael has just joined in as well, seamlessly. It's a different sound, it's a new sound. Just to choose one word to describe the music, it would be vibe. The full circle element of the album is really rewarding. Just like the fact that someone who was my hero, and then my mentor, and then my brother, and is now my collaborator. You know, it's this really cool progression of a relationship. I'm excited for what this album could really mean for a, a genre of music that maybe hasn't been created yet. <laughs> <laughs>